Hey guys, if you're shopping for knives and gear, make sure you check out the description of the video you're watching right now for a link to my Amazon store, where I've compiled some of the very best items available, including some of my own personal recommendations. Thanks! What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here, and today I've got a discussion topic about what I consider to be the three different types, the three main different types of knife people in this knife world. Now, as is the case with a lot of content on my channel, I, I like to cater to new people. This world, this knife world, is ever expanding and it is growing fast. It is very confusing, right? And I remember being very confused by it when I came in and it is arguably 10 times the size that it was. So people getting into this, right? Whether you enjoyed knives a long time ago, right? If you're much older and you enjoyed knives a long time ago and were out of the game for a while and you came back in, you're like, what the heck? right? Or you're brand new to it, right? It's confusing. All the different terms, all the different, you know, brands, all the different, you know, the, the controversies, ah, oh, you know, and it's, it's like you're trying to rush to keep up with everything and you don't need to. But I think it's important to point out the three different types of knife people to help new people distinguish the, the information that they're getting right. I think if I, if I kind of help clarify, at least from my perspective, having seen thousands of comments from different types of people um, to help clarify these these different types of people. And, and um, maybe, uh, you know, when newer people are getting information from other people in the knife world to help kind of understand maybe what type of knife person they are, right? I think that that really helps them decide as an individual whether or not they want to, you know, take that information and, uh, you know, hold on to it and, and uh, make decisions based off of it or ignore it. All right, there's no reason that you have to take the information as absolute from any one individual, including myself. I don't know everything, but I do consider myself to be somewhat of a hybridization between these three. And it's not because I'm like, look at me, I'm so, you know, I know everything and I'm, I'm, I'm right in between. No, it's, it's actually out of necessity. I kind of have to be, I have to look at things from different perspectives because I create a lot of content, a lot. Uh, and uh, there's a growing audience that watches my channel, and my audience is very diverse. Uh, different types of knife people, users, collectors, and enthusiasts all watch my channel. So it's important to, you know, view things from different perspectives. So the three different types, in my opinion, are, like I just said, knife users. And these are people who basically care nothing for the excess, right? They have their own opinions on what uh, the definition of a good tool is based on the category of the tool. For example, a knife, right? A knife should come in and out of the pocket easily. It should cut efficiently depending on what it is that you're cutting. And these people likely have multiple different knives for multiple different specific tasks or, you know, different groups of tasks. It doesn't really matter to them exactly what it's made out of. It matters that it is durable and that it continues to cut and that it stands up based on what they bought. Most of the time, I think people who are pure user, which I don't, basically purists in each category, even if you'd say that you're an absolute purist, I, I, I really, I think that's pretty rare. I think most people are hybridizations of, you know, uh, multiple groups. You know, you're either mostly one and part of another, right? Or you're a little bit of everything like me, or you're, you know, it's, it, it's it, people who are absolutely like, nope, or, you know, like the, the user crowd's like, I only care for the utilitarian benefits and I care nothing else for that. I've got one knife and it does everything. Not, not really, but I'm not making fun of any one particular group. It's just that, that I, feel, I find that to be exceedingly rare. Um, but usually people who are, if, if they're a pure user, um, they will, uh, they'll own a few knives. They'll be, fair, they'll be fairly inexpensive. They won't have necessarily exotic materials. The geometry of their blades will likely be really good, really specific towards uh, you know, cutting efficiency, uh, depending on what it is they're using their knives for. And I feel like these are some examples of knives that uh, the pure user might use. Um, and these are knives that I use. And I that's why I can say that because they are excellent users. This is my Rat 1 and D2. This is my uh, Cold Steel uh, uh, Tough Light. Uh, and as you can see, it's been very thoroughly loved. And then because I have to use two hands, I'll show you guys the Open L number eight. Oh, sorry, ring lock. <laughs> Again, very inexpensive knife, very efficient cutter, not not meant for anything ultra hard use. It's not necessarily that a, a user purist will, um, you know, go after in exceedingly hard use knives. Maybe in some cases, right? But for the most part, people who are pure users 
um, will look at what it is that they're going to do and they will get exactly the right tool with, for that and nothing in excess, right? So I know that there's, you know, some hardcore users out there who are like, well, I, you know, use uh, the Cold Steel Tridlock. My 8010 can handle anything, right? I would say you're still partially enthusiast there because, you know, you obviously picked that thing up because of the nature of the triad lock, the draw to it, the excess strength, right? I've said this many times. I think that the triad lock is unquestionably or arguably the most durable. Uh, I said unquestionably, I meant arguably the most durable locking system out there. But I think the benefits of the lock are so far beyond anything that's, you know, would would come would occur naturally during use, right? That a lot of it is the draw that's created by Cold Steel's marketing, which is Hilarious, but it it, uh, it it obviously has an effect. And on top of that, you know, it's S thirty five yen. Even if you didn't buy it for the for the steel, right? You obviously saw the excess value in it. Um, now, still though, don't let me tell you how to think. You can think how you want, but I would say anybody who picks up something like that is probably a little bit of an enthusiast, and at the same time, maybe a core user, right? Uh, but that's that's the idea there. Um, the next uh, the next type of person. And these groups aren't necessarily indicative. They're all out here for different examples. The next type of person is the collector. Um, a pure collector, in my opinion, is somebody who really doesn't care if the knife is expensive or inexpensive or made out of a particular material. Um, some people just collect an insane amount of knives. Uh, many, many times on Instagram, I've seen uh, people who are definitely collectors or kind of like knife hoarders. And there's nothing wrong with that. I, I've got a, a pretty big collection. Everybody's got a reasonably, you know, a lot of people who are knife people have um, different sizes of collections, but some people, the, the people who are just into the collection aspect of it, they don't really care if it's a budget knife, if it's made in China, made in US. I mean, obviously there's different subcategories. Some people only collect US knives. Some people only collect certain types of knives, right? My point is, is that the collector will either specifically, specifically collect something in a particular series or a particular style, regardless of the price or, ne or even necessarily what it is made out of. It's just the collection aspect of it is what's important to them. Some people will specifically collect Spyderco paramilitary, I'm sorry, Spyderco para threes, right? Just Spyderco para threes. Some people just collect Spydercos and it's the joy, right? The joy they get is in the collection aspect, just like the user part of it, right? The people who are core, like purist users, the main joy that they get is from using the knife. It doesn't really matter what it's made out of, right? It's just the user aspect. And collectors, well, again, to repeat myself, the collection aspect, right? So some people, I, I feel like a lot of people who are collectors are partially enthusiasts, right? A lot of people are like, well, I, I do collect knives, but I collect like specifically high-end stuff, uh, or I appreciate, you know, certain materials and a certain price range, and I kind of go after that, or I collect things that are popular, right? Most collectors are partially enthusiasts. It's pretty rare. I mean, I've seen a few pictures of people's collections where they have like hundreds of knives. And I'm like, that's, that is a purist collector. That guy's just collecting knives. Cause you see the weird stuff. There's like frost cutlery and M techs in there. And then they'll have a hinderer or they'll have a shear Goroff in there too. Right. I mean, they probably do appreciate some of those aspects. Right. But, um, people who, you know, have that many knives, you're probably, if you, if you are, you know, that person, you are probably a purist collector. Again, don't let me define you define yourself how you want. That's my take on that, or the collectors. I think, uh, you know, in today's knife world, especially most people, <clears throat> excuse me, who are watching, oh my gosh, I have no water, <coughs> no water down here, and I'm choking. Anyways, I think the most prominent core group, right, um, uh, is the knife enthusiast. This is the third one. Uh, this is uh, what I consider to be my personal core, and then I am partially partially a collector, partially a user, but I am mostly a knife enthusiast. These people enjoy all of the fine, minute details of their knife. They they want to know exactly what it is that it is made out of, not necessarily because they plan to use it for a specific task, but be because they enjoy the aspect of, you know, the work that's involved in it. Right. They, they a lot of times an enthusiast will, will go Timascus. What is that? How is it made? Right. What value does it add to the knife? Why is it collectible? Is it something that adds value? Um, what does you know, how does this knife make me feel as a complete object because of all the little tiny things? A knife enthusiast will care like me. I care very much for the ergonomic design, the overall aesthetic. 
uh, I care very much for the materials, right? Um, I, I see value in these things, even if they don't offer an obvious utilitarian benefit. Right. And these people, a lot of times, you know, the usually I think the enthusiasts, like the pure um, uh, user crowd and the pure enthusiast crowd kind of clash because the most common things are like, you know, user crowd goes, um, why do you have that if you're not going to use it? It's just pocket jewelry. Well, because I just enjoy this kind of stuff. Why would you spend that much money on a knife? You For that much money, you could buy a firearm. Well, it's because I enjoy knives a little more than, than, you know, firearms or, you know, specifically because I see value in these particular elements, right? Like, those are so, so common. Like, whenever I see a comment like that from, like, from, you know, whoever, wherever they came from, I'm like, what? You're a meme. This is a meme. <laughs> You're a living, breathing meme. We, you know, we, we joke about this. And again, I'm not making it fun of any particular crowd, even though it seems like I'm bolstering, you know, the, the, the group that I consider myself in right? I don't mean to do that. But yeah, an enthusiast will appreciate that stuff. And oftentimes they, they um, will collect a little bit and they will use a little bit at least to help justify, you know, their purchases. I certainly do that, right? I will uh, intentionally go out and use a very expensive knife to help me justify my purchase, right? There's nothing wrong with that. Do you need to spend that much money? Do you need to be, you know, uh, do you need to have a full understanding of the, the materials and how they benefit the knife uh, in order to be able to enjoy and understand using them? No, right? The main, uh, you know, point that I'm making here is, is it doesn't matter which group you belong to either in, you know, specifically or, you know, a hybridization. It, it doesn't matter. It, all of this stuff, in my opinion, if you're a knife person, it's completely justified. And the important thing to remember is that we're all knife people. We all, I mean, the, the main thing here, the thing that connects all of us is that we all love knives for one reason or another and nobody's necessarily right or wrong even though people will incessantly claim to be <laughs> um, there are elitists in every category right the elitists are the troublemakers those are the dumpster fire starters the people who think that they know everything and that their their way of thinking is absolute and you can't think any other way doesn't matter what group you belong to if you're an elitist and you spread your information as absolute truth and that nothing can be argued against it your problem, right? Ignore elitists. Ignore people who come off as elitists because it's it's ultra, ultra biased. No matter how much experience it's based on, it's just, ugh, you know. But uh, to continue here, I truly think that most people are hybridizations, right? Uh, um, I, I think that there's joy to be found in, in all three of these different categories, right? I mean, for me, yeah, a lot of it is, um, you know, seeking out a particular model, enjoying all the little aspects. And maybe, you know, in the case of this uh, XM24, which I call the Dark Horse, um, I, uh, you know, first became aware of Hinderer Knives back in 2012 or so. And I was like, oh my gosh, those are expensive. Why? Why are they so expensive? Okay, so materials, okay, so they're using titanium and you're using, back then, believe it or not, it was CTS XHP primarily is what they're using. And I was like, what the heck is, wait, so steels have different types. Okay, so then this, the enthusiast in me, uh, unbeknownst to me at the time, was slowly being born, right? And I, I found interest in that stuff because I didn't understand it. I didn't push it away, you know, I, a little bit I did at first, but... I didn't immediately push it away. I was just like, well, what? there has to be a reason. It can't just be like, you know, well, look at this. It's shiny. Buy this, right? Some people view it that way, but I don't because the more that I looked into it, the more that I felt like I understood. And therefore, you know, a lot of this stuff became more and more and more justified, at least out of curiosity, right? So eventually, and this is, there's a lot of other stuff that happened in between, but a lot of you guys know I bought my first Tinder and whether it was out of, you know, just wanting the affirmation, right? Or being blind to anything else because I spent so much money on it and I wanted it to be this thing. Whatever it was, what it turned into was a, an, an absolute obsession with every last little aspect of a folding knife. I mean, that's why you're watching this video right now. It's because I became that person. Uh, and then I, I could not stop obsessing over it. And I loved learning about all the different designers and all the different materials and the different reasons for... Uh, the, the position of the pocket clip, right? The geometry of a blade, the um, the material of a blade, right? How it's beneficial or things like that. But I also enjoy things that um, have no utilitarian benefit, right? The Mokume scale on this uh, Carver Custom Flipper. Yeah, beautiful. Does it offer any major benefit over a lot of other materials? 
No, not really. Um, the titanium or the Timascus pocket clip just looks really nice. I just like how Timascus looks. And I think the process, um, you know, for creating it is interesting, right? It's not going to be um, overly justified to every last uh, person out there. But to me, it's very beautiful. And it's interesting that um, cutting objects are made out of materials like this. And that's also what drives my uh, collector instinct. I, I like to acquire these things and I like to just have them and enjoy them. And I do use most of them. In fact, the only knife in my entire collection that does not get used is my XM24. Sorry, if you don't like that, I've got lots of other videos explaining that in detail. I'm not really gonna explain that here, but the rest of my knives, and by the way, I, I, I own all these. Um, yeah, I definitely use them and I appreciate them for the tools that they are. Right, I don't do anything crazy with my knives, so a lot of times it's hard to distinguish the benefits between a $50 knife and a $500 knife. But I use them all the same, and I enjoy it. Right, um, but uh, you know, there's no reason to, um, you know, if you're new, to feel like you have to spend a whole bunch of money um, to get a really quality item. You know, um, and that's a lot of times the user crowd will tell you that, and they're right. You don't have to spend a lot of money to get a quality item. Do you get a better item? Do you get a more capable item when you spend more money? I think arguably in some cases, I think it's certain there's a point of diminishing returns. I've had a video about that a long time ago. I named the Ritter Hogue as the uh, point of diminishing returns in the American production knife world. And I think here lately, the 20 CV bare knuckle is probably a better place. Uh, people who, you know, don't mind uh, buying Chinese uh, cutlery will tell you that Civivi makes some of the best budget knives at uh, this one's uh, the Civivi Praxis is around $40, right? But there's all these different hybridizations of conversations that are coming from different types of people that are more or less one uh, group, right? Most of these people, like I said, are combinations of groups. But I, I really think that it's important to understand that so that you can kind of distinguish, you know, what type of information you're getting from what type of person and whether or not it's beneficial to you, right? Everybody has their own unique path. We are all individual people. We all like knives, but we're all our own individual people. And we deserve to go down our own unique paths and discover this, this type of stuff slowly for ourselves. You know, you may be initially drawn to a lot of these, um, you know, interesting aspects, right? Oh my gosh, that's a switchblade. Is that a, is that a pearl inlay? And what's the materials? It's titanium, right? And it's, you know, uh, designed by somebody called Mick Strider. Uh, oh, I've heard about that guy. You know, Protech, who's Protech, right? I mean, like all that stuff is, to me, like that's me wondering out loud as a younger version of myself. It's interesting. But those aspects, that 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 wondering uh, and acquisition might lead you to turn into something like me, or you might realize you get it and you're like, I have an overwhelming desire to use this. No part of me wants to baby it. I want to use it, right? Then you go out and use it and then you discover joy for that item, right? And you start to build a foundation for what you expect by a certain price range, right? So there's a lot of different information out there. And I think the most important message from this entire video is we all need each other. <laughs> the enthusiasts, the pure enthusiasts need the collectors and they need the users, right? Collectors are, are, are great at explaining um, different series of knives and when certain uh, runs of certain knives came out and you know what they you know how valuable they are and what you're going to pay to acquire one right it may not be super important right the value of that particular item you know being it, it may not be something where the, the the enthusiast or the user might not see the exact same value to a collector somebody who's collecting right but it's important to understand the information behind it for reasons that are specific to one or both of these groups right the users oh definitely we got to know we got to know if it's heat treated correctly we got to know if it functions right we got to know how durable it is right whether they're hucking a grenade at it or they're just testing the edge on you know continuous cutting in wood yeah we definitely we definitely need the the users for sure right and the enthusiasts i think um it's important uh, i'm gonna you know i'm gonna toot my own horn here but yeah i like watching youtube videos of reviewers that go over the they comb over the details of this stuff and they show you everything up close they explain things right they explain the processes or the, you know, just they, they give you a, a a reason to appreciate the tiny little details. And in some cases can really add value to a design that is otherwise very confusing to a new person. Why does the Combat Truidon Hellhound cost $600? What does Signature Series mean? What is 204P? What's the benefit? Why this? Why that? Right? An enthusiast oftentimes will be able to explain that stuff, at least from their perspective, because... 
That's what they obsess over. Will it always be justified to every individual person? No. You ask a million different people, you'll get a, a million different answers. But it is important, the synergy, right, between these groups. Um, and some people are going to say, you know, may, maybe to you there are fourth and fifth and sixth categories. To me, my perspective as a channel that's not massive, right? Um, I, I have a decent sized channel, about 20,000 subscribers, at least at the time of this video. I've been uploading content for two and a half years and I've got over a thousand videos. I've been a knife enthusiast for a decade. So I've got a good data pool, right? I've got a good amount of information that I'm getting this from. To me, it seems like these are the three main cores and they are all important, right? They, we may not always agree, but uh, it is important, you know, every group should respect the next group and understand what they, you know, stand to benefit, right? I think 20 minutes is enough. I think there's been plenty of uh, redundancies uh, here. So uh, let's go ahead and, and finish up here, guys. I, I hope that you enjoyed this. I hope you were at least mildly entertained by it. If you did, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody. And have a great day.